Hello, today I will be discussing the Grizzly Fire Scenario in Glenwood Canyon, Colorado, and we're going to be demonstrating the RGIS image for RGIS online capabilities with dynamic layers and on-the-fly processing. Little background on the Grizzly Canyon fire. It started on August 10th, 2020 and burned around 32,464 acres um, by September 3rd, and it was 82% per con contained at that point. So in this scenario, we're going to be utilizing uh, open source Sentinel-2 Earth observation satellite data. We want to host those as dynamic imagery layers and have pre and post fire mosaic images and perform imagery analysis to calculate burn severity using raster functions all within RGS image for RGS online. So this is a quick overview of what the imagery looks like as it's uploaded. So this is the pre-fire 2020, um, and this is a quick look at the mosaic once it's been uploaded into RGIS online. And here is a post-fire rendering of the same image just a year later after the fire, and you can clearly see the burn areas between the two. So that's pre-fire, this is post-fire. Also with the abilities of RGIS, image for online, you have the ability to change your rendering of bands on the fly. And in this case, we have applied the band combination of 843 to give us the vegetation health index for pre and post fire images. So this is the pre fire color infrared. And then this is the post fire color infrared. And you can clearly see the damage to the vegetation health between the two of these. So next we'll look into the data loading workflow for Sentinel-2 imagery. So I'll begin by logging into my RGIS online account and you can go to my settings and ensure that the RGIS image for online has been assigned, license has been assigned to your user. And once you verify this, you can, I will click to um, look at my content. After clicking on the new content or going to my content, we can create an imagery layer by selecting new item, my content, imagery layer. And once those are created, we'll get the option to select tiled imagery or dynamic imagery. And in this case, we want to create dynamic imagery so we can generate analysis on the fly with this imagery. And we want to make those mosaics. So it'll be uh, one mosaic image, and then we can go in here and apply that. And we'll select Sentinel-2 as our data source. Um, but with RGIS image for online, we do support over 30 raster types, including many raster file types, satellite aerial and scientific formats. As we've selected Sentinel-2, we also need to configure our properties to level two because this is a level two data set. And we also need to adjust our properties to set the BOA reflectance so we can get uh, reflectance that is key to the analysis so we get atmospherically corrected bottom of atmosphere reflectance products that is ortho rectified and we can also get all these bands including ground samples of 10 20 and 60 meters once this is complete we can drag and drop our imagery over so here you can see we're I'm dragging and dropping it into the the drop down box here and it's automatically updated uploading them and we have them here available once they're complete and as those update you can go in and edit the metadata while they're updating so you can give them tags in this case this is the 2020 imagery set so we can give it its name the tags of the data types where the location is and other things that may make this easier to search within the organization it is a note that we'll be using 2020 data as well to generate secondary images for comparison. So this workflow is utilized twice, once with 2020 and again for 2021. So now that our imagery is published, I should be able to use this with any Esri application. So let's open a web map and check out the published pre-fire imagery and some do some visualization and analysis. So first, we're going to open the web map here, and you can see the 2020 Sentinel-2 image mosaic in the web viewer. In the table of contents, I have a grizzly fire perimeter mask. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on so we highlight our boundary with our, our fire boundary is in white. Let's also take a look at the second 2021 Sentinel-2 mosaic just so we can compare the two images. 
And in these, you can still clearly see the damage done by the fire in our area of interest. So now that we have our 2020 image mosaic available here, we're going to click the ellipses and select image display. And here we're going to change our band combinations from four to eight, from three to four, and from two to three. And then we're going to adjust the stretch type to percent clip and then adjust the gamma slider to approximately 1.4. Doing this allows for greater contrast between the pixels so we can see the comparison between the two. And once done, we're going to hit apply. And here we can see the resulting index that we have here where the red and green and healthy vegetation is displayed as bright red. Now let's view the post fire imagery. Now that we have our post fire imagery, we're going to do some adjustments using predefined renderers. And that's one of the unique features of dynamic imagery layers is the server can perform analysis on the fly with raster functions that are streamed to the map. One of the main benefits of on the fly analysis is that you don't need to pre compute the analysis and store the results as additional imagery layers. With raster functions, you can build processing chains that are simple as defining band combinations and applying visual enhancements to more complex processing chains for virtually any raster processing workflow. Here's a few examples. So, with our 2021 imagery mosaic, we're going to apply a predefined renderer to do the same things that we just did on the 2020 images. So we're going to click our ellipses, go to image display, and in the renderer dropdown, we're going to select color infrared. And you can see the bands are the same combination we just did. And then we're going to hit apply. And here we can see that this has been applied on the fly to our imagery, and we can compare it between the two that we have here. And we can still see the differences in vegetation between the two. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to apply a couple more predefined renderers to this 2021 mosaic. So we'll click the ellipses again, go to image display. In our imagery drop down, we're going to change it to short wave infrared. And with the shortwave infrared, it's going to utilize band combinations with near infrared and blue bands to highlight vegetation health. Areas with healthy vegetation appear in shades of green, and the areas that are unvegetated or in poor health appear in shades of red. And we can see the damage caused by the fire this way as well. Lastly, we're going to apply another one, and this one's going to be the NDVI colorized renderer. And again, we'll select from the drop down here. This renderer applies a band arithmetic formula instead of a simple band combination to calculate an index of relative biomass and colorizes the result with a color ramp. So here we're going to apply this. Now that we have that applied, we can see the results that we get. The last renderer we want to apply is going to help us with our analysis of the burn severity here. And so we're going to utilize another renderer that focuses on the normalized burn ratio. And this also applies a band arithmetic formula to calculate an index that is designed to highlight burned areas. So we're going to select that. And for our stretch type, we're going to change to minimum and maximum. Our color ramp on this defaults to grayscale, so we're going to add the green to yellow red, and we're going to invert the color ramp to highlight our areas as of damage in bright red and hit apply. And here we can see the outputs and visualize where the areas of highest damage was done by the fire within the Grizzly Fire boundary. On the fly raster analysis is great for exploratory analysis and visualization because the results are generated quickly. Performance is optimized because the server only processes the pixels in the visible map extent and resamples them to the resolution on the screen display. 
However, when you intend to use the analysis result into as input into further analysis, you should run the analysis at the full resolution of the imagery and store the result as a new imagery layer. Let's examine how we can do this in our GIS image for our GIS online. So we're going to change this mosaic back to our natural color and hit apply. And now we're going to close out of this. And we're going to go over to analysis. This is where we want to start conducting the analysis that we just discussed. So we'll hit analysis, raster analysis. We're going to select manage data and extract raster. This will allow us to extract the area of interest that we're wanting to focus on. And here is where we can input our parameters for this. So we want to extract our 2020 mosaic within the boundary. And we're going to do this by selecting that mosaic, choose a layer. We're going to choose the grizzly flower boundary and use this input as feature clipping geometry. And we also want to extract the data within. So now that we have these set, we're going to give the resulting layer a name such as pre-fire 2020 extract. And we can also click the show credits option, which will show us the amount of credits that will be utilized to do so. And while we wait on that, you see that we have a tiled imagery layer here as our output. We can save the result as a dynamic imagery layer, but tile layer support distributed processing, which makes them great choices for when you plan to use them as inputs for further analysis. So here we can see our credits required. We're going to close that and then we would hit run analysis. So we've already done this, so I'm going to hop back over so you can see the outputs here. Here's our pre fire extract. And then here's the post fire extract. Now that we've extracted the imagery from our area of interest, we can run our final analysis to generate a burn severity surface. For this, we'll use a custom raster function template that implements a processing workflow that is commonly used by fire managers to classify an area into different classes of burn severity. So we're going to click analysis, raster analysis, and then we're going to select the raster function FX button here. Now that we've hit this landing page, we're going to select the slot drop down from system to my groups. We'll see our template here. We're going to add that. And a description of this template is a, it, that it calculates the difference in normalized burn ratios for pre and post fire imagery. This template extracts the bands using band arithmetic, the minus function, focal statistics, and remap function to categorize the results into different classes and an attribute table is assigned. So now that we've added this, we can hit OK. Don't save it because we've already got it in our organization and here it is applied here. And now that we have it, we have our parameters here and we can see that we need to change our drop downs here. So we're going to use our pre fire 2020 extract and our post fire 2021 extract that we generated earlier. And here we're going to give a new name to this. And we can name it whatever we'd like. In this case, we're going to name it burn severity grizzly fire. And then our output will be a tiled imagery layer again, and we can also show the credits as we did before. All right, we can see that here. So we've already gone ahead and run the analysis here as well. And so what you can see in the output of this is we get an index showing and legend showing the unburned, low, moderate, and high burn severity areas within our area of interest. With this, we have used raster functions to generate on-the-fly results from dynamic imagery and to generate persistent results from tiled imagery. You can do this all in the cloud with ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online. Thank you.